Japan is no stranger to seismic upheaval. Situated along the Pacific Ring of Fire, the country experiences thousands of tremors annually, some of which have had catastrophic consequences. Yet, among its many geological hazards, one stands out as the most ominous, the Nankai Trough, an immense offshore fault zone with the potential to unleash one of the most powerful earthquakes in modern history. Often described by scientists as a ticking time bomb, this fault has produced destructive earthquakes for centuries, and current evidence suggests the next big rupture may be imminent. The last major events in this fault system occurred in 1944 and 1946, wreaking havoc on cities and coastlines. Today, with urban expansion placing millions more in harm's way, the threat is greater than ever. Many seismologists believe that the next Nankai quake could dwarf even the devastation of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. So, what exactly makes this fault so dangerous, and how prepared is Japan for a calamity of this scale? Today, let's delve into the recent seismic activity along Japan's Nankai Trough and the escalating threat of an impending megaquake that could shake the nation and the world. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The Nankai Trough is an undersea subduction zone, stretching around 700 kilometers along the southeastern coastline of Japan, where the Philippine Sea Plate is descending beneath the Eurasian Plate. This convergence creates immense tectonic stress, which periodically releases in the form of large magnitude earthquakes exceeding 8.0 on the Richter scale, followed by powerful tsunamis. Subduction zones like the Nankai Trough are among the planet's most dangerous fault systems. As stress accumulates over decades, the eventual release can cause abrupt shifts in the Earth's crust, resulting in violent ground shaking and massive oceanic displacement. Geological studies show that the Nankai Trough generates megathrust earthquakes approximately every 100 to 150 years. When these quakes occur, they frequently cause tsunamis that reach the Japanese coastline within minutes. Two of the most significant modern examples are the 1944 Tonankai earthquake of magnitude 8.1 and the 1946 Nankai earthquake of magnitude 8.4. Both caused widespread structural damage and loss of life across southern Japan. Given the historical recurrence pattern, the fault is considered overdue for its next major rupture, a reality that continues to heighten concern among seismologists and emergency planners. Throughout Japanese history, the Nankai Trough has unleashed a series of devastating earthquakes, often arriving in frighteningly predictable intervals. Among the most destructive was the 1707 Hoi earthquake, which registered an estimated magnitude of 8.6. It devastated regions across Shikoku, Kyushu, and Honshu, generated a massive tsunami, and even triggered an eruption of Mount Fuji, a rare and ominous interaction between seismic and volcanic activity. The disaster claimed an estimated 30,000 lives, making it one of the deadliest earthquakes in Japanese history. Another significant sequence occurred in 1854, when two powerful earthquakes, the Ansei Tokai and Ansei Nankai events, struck just over a day apart, both exceeding magnitude 8. These quakes destroyed towns, caused widespread fires, and led to considerable loss of life. In more recent memory, the twin quakes of 1944 and 1946 hit key southern Japanese cities, compounding the damage of World War II. These historical events underscore a troubling trend. The Nankai Trough ruptures repeatedly over time, and seismic recurrence intervals strongly suggest another event is due. As of early 2025, the Japanese government reaffirmed its estimate that there is now an 80% chance of a magnitude 8.0 to 9.0 earthquake occurring along this fault within the next 30 years. In mid-2025, several seismic developments renewed focus on the Nankai Trough's growing instability. Most notably, in late June 2025, scientists detected a slow-slip earthquake off the coast of the Key Peninsula. Unlike traditional quakes, slow-slip events unfold gradually over days or weeks and cause no perceptible shaking, 
but they are critical indicators of deep tectonic movement. This particular event was captured by borehole seismometers installed as part of Japan's advanced ocean floor monitoring system. The instruments recorded subtle millimeter scale motion along the subduction interface, suggesting that stress is once again accumulating or being redistributed within the fault system. While some geophysicists believe such events may delay a major rupture by releasing stress, others warn that they could be precursors to larger quakes, especially when occurring near locked segments of a fault. Just days later, on July 1, 2025, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake struck near the Takara Islands, located southwest of the Nankai Trough along the Ryukyu Trench. Though not part of the Nankai Fault itself, this quake highlights the broader seismic tension along the Philippine Sea Plate boundary, which encompasses both regions. Earthquakes in nearby subduction zones can alter stress distribution, potentially influencing adjacent faults like Nankai. These back-to-back -back events, alongside new estimates, raising the probability of a Nankai megathrust quake to 80%, has deepened concerns among researchers. The recent activity doesn't confirm that a major rupture is imminent, but it strongly suggests that the fault is entering a more active phase, reinforcing the need for heightened vigilance and readiness. For decades, scientists have warned that the Nankai Trough has the potential to trigger one of the most devastating natural disasters in modern history. The potential consequences are staggering. Unlike isolated tremors, a full rupture along this fault could unleash a multi-segmented megathrust earthquake, potentially reaching a magnitude between 8.0 and 9.0. Such an event would strike Japan's southern and central coastline within minutes, delivering prolonged, violent shaking followed almost immediately by a towering tsunami. Major urban centers such as Osaka, Nagoya, and Shizuoka lie squarely in the danger zone. Despite Japan's stringent building codes, many structures, especially older ones, would likely collapse or suffer severe damage. Critical infrastructure like ports, highways, airports, and power plants could be crippled, cutting off essential lifelines in the immediate aftermath. But the true catastrophe begins after the shaking stops, when a massive tsunami, triggered by the megaquake, comes crashing ashore with devastating force. Waves could reach up to 20 meters in height, crashing ashore within 5 to 10 minutes of the initial quake. Entire towns could be submerged, with little time for evacuation. According to government models, a worst-case scenario could result in over 300,000 deaths, mostly from tsunami impacts, and force millions to evacuate. The economic damage would be staggering. While the 2011 Tohoku earthquake caused over $200 billion in losses, Estimates suggest a Nankai Trough disaster could exceed $1.8 trillion. Key industrial and export hubs, like Nagoya Port, could be shut down for months, disrupting global supply chains in electronics, automotive, and semiconductors. Given Japan's central role in global trade, the ripple effects would be immediate and widespread, possibly triggering a global recession. Even more concerning is the nuclear risk. The Fukushima disaster, which followed the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, revealed the vulnerability of nuclear facilities during seismic events. A Nankai megaquake could severely damage coastal reactors, raising the specter of radiation leaks and environmental contamination. Though the timing remains uncertain, recent seismic signals suggest the fault is becoming increasingly unstable, and Japan may be running out of time. Japan has long recognized the Nankai Trough as a top national threat and has invested heavily in earthquake readiness. Japan's building codes are among the strictest in the world, and infrastructure such as bridges and rail lines are designed to endure severe shaking. Coastal defenses like seawalls and evacuation towers have been constructed in vulnerable areas. One of the most advanced systems in place is the Earthquake Early Warning Network which includes ocean floor sensors capable of detecting tremors seconds before they reach land. These alerts give residents just enough time to take shelter or flee to higher ground. 
Regular disaster drills in schools, workplaces, and communities have cultivated a culture of preparedness. Educational campaigns teach citizens how to react in the event of a quake or tsunami. Government contingency plans cover emergency supplies, search and rescue coordination, and disaster relief funding. Despite these efforts, the sheer scale and unpredictability of a full-scale Nankai event would still challenge even Japan's world-class preparedness infrastructure. The Nankai Trough continues to exhibit the hallmarks of a fault under growing pressure. With new data pointing to increased tectonic movement and a rising probability of rupture, the question is no longer if, but when. Japan stands at a critical juncture, strengthened by decades of seismic engineering and emergency planning, yet shadowed by the threat of a catastrophe that could overwhelm even the best-laid systems. As slow-slip events and neighboring tremors remind us of the fault's quiet but persistent activity, the world should look to Japan, not only as a case study in preparedness, but as a warning of how nature can challenge even the most resilient societies. When the Nankai Trough finally ruptures, it won't just shake Japan, it will shake the world. The countdown continues. Will we be ready?